because we are kings and our words matter. may be going about and doing this and that and everything engaged in this and that all that is fine but I'm going to make sure that I spend a quality time in making sure that the word abides in me I tell you there is nothing but overcoming power that will come out of you because you're already an overcomer and the word will get inside of you and cause you to live that overcoming life every day of your life be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that. Be still and know. Be still and know that I. This is God's word for you. Be still. No matter what you're going through. Oceans rise 
when we let the word abide in us we can walk in victory when the when we let the word dominate us when we let the word rule us when we let the word of god dominate us and rule us and abide in us then we overcome the devil when we let the world dominate us when we let the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life dominate us see if you don't have the word in you you have no other option you have either this or that because you're already in the world the world is full of the world and what is the world lust of the flesh lust of eyes and pride of life you already got that it's already there it's learned it's a learned behavior with all of us we are born in this world in the sinful world we live in the surroundings it is natural for us we don't have to go like maths tuition and learn this you know this comes automatically hello even for mother tongue we need to have tuition these days <laughs> it's not coming but for sin there's no tuition the lust of the eyes you don't have to train and and give some coaching for that no it just comes automatically because you're in the world you just imbibe these things get these things and you just flow with these things and you get it so if you don't get the word of god to abide in you if you don't get the word of god to dominate you and rule you and control you all you have is the other stuff the world it is either the world that is dominating you or the word that is dominating you hello are you there <laughs> are you world dominated or are you word dominated now that's the difference between a spiritual person and an unspiritual person This is not talking about whether you got your name in the role in the church. No, this is talking about spirituality. What is spirituality? Are you world-minded or world-minded? Are you governed and ruled and dominated and controlled by the world and its ideas about everything or by the word and what it says about everything? Hello. If you're controlled by the word, if the word of God abides in you, you overcome the devil. the thing is this is that there's a devil and he doesn't want us to walk in that overcoming power he knows that we are more than conquerors believe me he knows that redemption has done something for us that we are new creatures he can see us coming but he is glad we don't know it hello <laughs> he's glad that most churches they're not talking about how we are more than conquerors and he's very happy about it he tells people go go there go to go to church there you know they attend regularly he doesn't mind you attending church he doesn't mind you taking your bibles and go in there and listen to some sermon or anything like that but if you are getting the word if you're getting truth and if you're the truth is controlling you and beginning to control you if the truth is abiding in you it's not just a sermon that you're hearing but the truth is abiding in you then he knows that you are a dangerous person to him he's threatened by you now he's scared of you that's the problem he doesn't want you to walk in victory because if you if you start walking in victory that means he's got to walk in defeat every day he's got to get his head banged every day he's got to fall to the ground before you every day and you're going to grind him every day and that he does not like he does not like you to walk in overcoming power and victory because he hates it he knows this thing about the new creation 
that the redemption has brought about a new race called the new creation and they are around but he's happy they don't know nothing about how they are a new creation and how they are more than a conqueror as long as they don't find out he's fine now look at 1 Timothy chapter 6 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life where unto thou art called also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses but just concentrate on the first sentence fight the good fight of faith everybody say fight the good fight of faith now i got to clarify something here because a lot of people think we got to fight with the devil we've got to fight with the devil they think we are at war with the devil the devil is at war with us and we are at war with him and we've got to win the war and everything but i got news for you the war was over 2000 years ago jesus defeated him he is a defeated foe he is finished his teeth had been pulled out his head has been crushed he is terribly wounded he is a defeated foe that's what the devil is so we don't really have a fight with him then what kind of fight is this please understand this fight is not a fight with the devil it's a fight of faith look at that look at the verse carefully fight the good fight of faith it's a fight of faith it's not the fight with the devil it's a fight of faith what is a fight of faith it is i now begin to believe that i'm more than a conqueror that i have the overcoming power that i can walk in victory that every day can be a winning day for me because jesus lives in me and i am more than a conqueror i'm a new person i'm born again and all that is born of god overcomes the world i start believing that and the devil he doesn't like that because if i really believe that and if it really works out then he is defeated every day he cannot cheat me he cannot lie to me that I, that he is bigger than me and all of that because i come to know the truth so what he does is he tries to bring in all kinds of problems into my life to take away the word from me i turn with me to mark chapter 4 now everybody say fight the good fight of faith so it's a fight of faith right but also notice it says it's a good fight what's a good fight when india and pakistan play when india wins you say that's a good match but when india loses is that's a bad match i didn't like that one <laughs> hello are you that way <laughs> we like it when we win it that's a good match we call it it's a good fight because it's a fight that every one of us can win that is why paul calls it fight that good fight it's a good fight because when you fight it you'll know that you can win it you can positively win it all right turn with me to mark chapter 4 and let me read to you from verse 14 now this is a very familiar verse we're studying it in the evenings also here but look at look at this it's talking about how the devil comes and takes away the word that is sown in our hearts how he is interested in taking the word away he is not interested in us he is interested in the word because he understands what many christians don't understand for christians i'm preaching day after day saying you know you got to sow the word in your heart and it's the word that will bring you victory and all of that but the devil already knows it's the word that brings victory because word brings faith and faith is the victory and the devil knows it so he is not interested in us he is interested in the word that is in us so look at how he deals with it verse 14 the sower sows the word these are they by the wayside where the word is sown and when they have heard satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts see satan doesn't come until the word is sown satan doesn't come just because you're taking baptism satan doesn't come because you join church satan doesn't come because you go to church every sunday regularly there's a lot of people going to church 50 years regularly satan doesn't bother them hello <laughs> god he's not scared of them but satan comes immediately he attends to it immediately he has told all his cohorts saying if anybody gets the word get on the job immediately because if you don't take away the word it's going to come back to us it's going to bring defeat to us every day it's going to bring more and more agony to us every day so he comes immediately now some people are saying well brother then i better stay out of it 
Glad you told me Satan cometh immediately. Why rake up Satan unnecessarily? <laughs> He's not been bothering me. Now because you're telling me if the word gets into my heart the devil will come immediately. I better not come to church and hear the word because the devil will come immediately. Well, you can choose to stay out and keep the word out but you will not have victory. You may be saved, you may be baptized and all of that but you'll be just like an unsaved person without the word in your heart. Without the word in your heart there is no possibility of victory. My attitude is this, I want victory very bad. I don't want to live in defeat. I don't want to live in powerlessness. I don't want to live in weakness. I don't want to live in defeat. I want to live in victory every day. Amen. So I got to put the word. But if I put the word then the devil comes immediately. So I've decided let the devil come. He's not such a big shot after all. He's already been all, all his teeth is knocked out. Psalm 2 says it's all in the Bible. Read the Bible right. And his head has been crushed. He's very badly bruised and injured. He's got it badly. So I'm not afraid of him. Let him come. He's not going to do any great damage to me. He wants to find if there's an opportunity to take the word away from me. How is he going to do it? Listen to this. It says, verse 16, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, when they've heard the word immediately receive it with gladness see these people receive the word with gladness and they have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time afterward when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake immediately they are offended now here two ways that the devil comes to take away the word are mentioned affliction or persecution the devil comes with affliction or persecution to take away the word But a lot of times when affliction and persecution comes immediately the people think that God is the one that is afflicting them and persecuting them. When affliction and persecution comes you better be ready because the devil wants to use it to speak to you and tell you this 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 thing doesn't work you're going to fail you're doomed you're finished and all of that. He uses the affliction and persecution to persecute you and torment you. Why? Because he doesn't want you to believe the word. He wants to take away the word. he wants you wants to take away your faith in the word because he knows that faith is the victory your faith will bring victory he knows that all right now listen to this and these are they that are sown among the thorns verse 18 such as hear the word and the cares of the world three more are mentioned here cares of the world and the deceitfulness of the riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful so affliction and persecution is two things and if they don't work he's got other avenues if trouble doesn't work he gives you some other ways worry is one way and then deceitfulness of riches is another way and then lusts of other things entering in your heart is heart is uh diverted to desire this and that and everything to go after this and that and everything have you ever seen that Sometimes you really get diverted you're going really strong spiritually in everything spending time with God and his word and prayer and everything and all of a sudden your whole life turns around you're spending more time with other stuff now some watching some entertainment or TV or going to this and that and uh, you know having some fun with that and this you know uh, you know I am not here to tell you how much you can watch TV and how much you have to pray because I I come from that background where they told us you pray for 2 hours you read the bible for 2 hours and all of that and i went through all of that you know and boy that was torturous you know they prescribed for us what i should do and i can't watch no tv and i can't watch no this that and all of that that type of stuff and i don't want to do that because the new testament method is not for me to judge you the bible says judge yourself so i preach principles i preach certain principles then you judge yourself accordingly what i'm saying is When the devil is working trying to take the word from you, you know how he does takes it. One of the easiest way he does it is by diverting your attention so that you get desire for other things. You become interested in other things more than the things of God. That's the lust of other things entering in. Newly it comes in. You begin to desire other things. Now, how do you know where your heart is? How do you know? what you like most how do you know what you love 
Very easy to find out what you love. Find out what your time is spent for. Where most of your time goes, that is what you love most. Hello. Whatever you are spending your time most, for that is what you love most. I am not saying you can't watch TV or anything. No, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. You know. We have preached that enough and it doesn't work. The same preachers are preaching now and say, please watch us on television. You know. You know. They, they want you to watch them now since they are on it, you know. I thought, brother, we, need, we should not watch. He said, no, no, you watch. We are there, six o'clock in the morning, you know. <laughs> we are in this world, so we are out there. Sometimes we are out there in some entertainment. We are out there playing some games. We are out there having some fun with others and uh, going here and there and, and all of that. That's all fine. We are, because we live in a world, we live in a society, and we are engaged in so many things. But where is your love? That's the thing. It's not that you can't do any of these things. It's not, it's not that you can't go here, you can't do this, and you can't do that and all of that. But where is your love? What do you love? Love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. You see, you got to determine where your love is. You got to judge yourself. I don't have to judge you or you don't have to judge me. It's not about that. It's about us judging ourselves based on the word of God and the principles of God's word. Where are we? Where our desires are? What our hearts desire? And how do we go about our life? What do we love most? Because that is going to determine whether you're going to win the victory in life or not. Your victory in life depends upon the word abiding in you. What are you doing about the word abiding in you? Are you meditating upon the word? Are you listening to the word? Are you getting some quality teaching inside of you? Are you thinking about these things? Are you into practicing these things? Are you doing these things? He that heareth and doeth these things is blessed in doing them, the Bible says. Not that he that hears and go, goes to church and hears them. No. Going to church and hearing is important. But why do you go to church and hear? So that you may do it. Only in doing, you're blessed. So, what are you doing? When you do what the Bible says, that is when you begin to see the results. One man was telling me, he said, I believe every word of it, and I practice it, I do it, and it's working for me, he said. <laughs> he's, he's from a non-Christian background. He says, some of your Christians, they don't believe all of it. They just hear it like a sermon, and they don't think it's very important. But I hear every word and I believe every word and I practice everything because I truly and fully and completely believe it and I do what it says. And it's working for me, he says. And everybody's with their mouth open looking at him now, you know, say, my God, you know, how does it work for him, you know? Some people say, well, it's like a newcomer's luck, you know. <laughs> for some, sometimes for non-Christian people, it works better. <laughs> no, it works better for this guy because he practices it. For anybody who practices it, it'll work. If you hear and practice it, it'll work. And I tell you, the devil may come these five ways and 50 more ways, it doesn't matter. He can't take the word from you if you determine to put up the good fight of faith. You fight for your faith. You fight for what you believe. You stand on what you believe. Don't lose your faith. Because your faith is the victory. Amen. Your faith is going to bring you the victory. Stand on the word. Don't lose the word. The devil is fighting through persecution, through affliction, through cares of the world, through the receitfulness of riches, by diverting your attention and getting you to desire this and that and be distracted by a thousand different things. But if you put up a fight and you say, no, I'm going to stay with the word, I'm going to give priority to the word, I may be involved in this world, I may be working in this world, I may be going about and doing this and that and everything, engaged in this and that, all that is fine, but I'm going to make sure that I spend a quality time in making sure that the word abides in me, I tell you there is nothing but overcoming power that will come out of you because you're already an overcomer and the word will get inside of you and cause you to live that overcoming life every day of your life. Amen. Every day. <laughs> 
We have raised a thousand voices just to lift your holy name. And we will raise thousands more to sing of your beauty in this place. Well, not can even fathom, no, not one to find your worth. As we marvel in your presence to the ends of the earth. Touch your heart. 